The word trebuchet has been used for convenience to designate rotating beam machines and the full knowledge that other terms were also used in the Middle Ages and that the question of nomenclature remains unresolved. Now since we covered that part, let's get started. There were basically two types of trebuchet. The traction trebuchet, which was operated by men pulling ropes, and the counterweight trebuchet, which provided the necessary force by using a counterweight. Let's begin with the traction trebuchet, which is an older and simpler design. It is assumed that it is a Chinese invention and made its way to Europe via the Arab world around the 9th century. It was the dominant form of artillery in Western warfare during the period of 1000 to 1380. The traction trebuchet was a rather simple construction. The frame was static and connected to the dynamic beam with an axle. On one end of the beam was a nest, sling or other element for holding the payload attached. And on the other end, several ropes for men pulling down the beam in order to provide enough force to propel the payload. According to the historian Donald Hill, the most detailed accounts for traction trebuchets are from Chinese sources. And he mentions the following numbers that are also similar to Arabic sources, but take them with a large grain of salt. The relation in length of the long and short parts of the beam was 6 to 1 or 5 to 1 for light machines and 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 for heavy traction trebuchets. Now the number of ropes in the illustration is not correct. There were usually around 20 to 125 ropes and pulled by 40 to 250 men. Thus although it is a rather simple machine, the handling required quite some training and coordination. The range of a traction trebuchet was around 78 to 120 meters, whereas the payload was quite varied from 1 kg to 59 kg. Now one drawback of the traction trebuchet was that the men operating the machines had a varying pull on the ropes, thus the firing range was likely changed from shot to shot even without accounting for exhaustion. Something that was not the case with the counterweight trebuchet, so let's take a closer look at it. Hill states about the counterweight trebuchet, This machine appears to have been invented somewhere in the Mediterranean area in the late 12th century and to have spread outward very rapidly from its point of origin into northern Europe and western Islam. But the question of the exact provenance of the invention we find in Europe or in Islam is not resolved. The counterweight trebuchet was more complex. Instead of men pulling down the beam, another axle with a counterweight was fixed on the end of the beam. Furthermore, a mechanism for pulling down and fixating the long arm was added, which was usually a winch. The counterweight was filled with stone, sand, lead or other heavy material. Another major addition was the use of a long sling, which was not unique to the counterweight trebuchet but very important. But more on this later. The beam ratio of the counterweight trebuchet was also around 5 to 1 or 6 to 1. From what we know, it seems that counterweight trebuchets were used with heavier missiles. From a 14th century siege, marble missiles were recovered. The largest had a weight of 230 kg. There are also accounts for other sieges giving a value of 250 kg, but the usual wipe was probably more around 45 to 90 kg. Now let's take a look at the range. There are no proper accounts according to Hill, but he assumes 275 meters should be correct whereas another scholar notes that modern replicas suggest a range in order of only 100 to 120 meters, which would be about the same as the traction trebuchet. Now at first look it may be quite surprising why it took so long to develop the counterweight trebuchet. After all it seems just a simple improvement, but Hill argues that is not the case. He notes, what is in fact surprising when one comes to consider the dynamics of the counterweight trebuchet is that it ever became a useful engine of war at all. One of the main differences to the traction trebuchet is the fact that a lot of force is applied on the beam when the trebuchet is readied and held in position, whereas the traction trebuchet had the force only applied for a short amount of time. Thus the counterweight trebuchet had to be constructed with a stronger beam, which reduces its effectiveness quite considerably. Yet one would assume that proper calculations or laborious trials and errors of various variations could produce an effective counterweight trebuchet. Yet Hill notes that without the addition of a long sling there was no possible combination that would have made a feasible weapon. The long sling basically provided an almost weightless extension of the beam, thus providing the additional force 
that compensated for the increasing weight of the beam. Although the counterweight trebuchet was quite a feat in engineering, its influence on warfare was limited, and the balance between offense and defense was not altered significantly. Let's take a short look at the main difference of the traction and counterweight trebuchets. The main advantages of the traction trebuchet were that it was faster and cheaper to build, and needed no specialists. It was also easier to transport and had a higher rate of fire. Yet during operations it needed a larger amount of manpower. The main advantages of the counter trebuchet were its ability to fire larger stones and require less manpower during operations. The major drawbacks were it was a complex machine and required specialists that were very few and rare. In terms of operating it depends to a certain degree on the perspective which one has. Hill noted that the traction trebuchet required greater skill in handling whereas the counterweight trebuchet required greater skill in design. But John Franz notes, the construction and operation of the counterweight trebuchet was the provenance of specialist engineers who were not always available and it was ponderous to transport. Hence it really depends how one defines handling and or operating. I assume if one includes maintenance into handling that the counterweight trebuchet was harder to handle. Overall both types were used together. Looking at the advantage and the disadvantages, the traction trebuchet were probably used as throwing light missiles, whereas the counterweight trebuchet used for heavy stones. Which brings us to the next point, the overall effectiveness of trebuchets. In movies and computer games trebuchets are often shown as a weapon that can destroy city walls and towers easily. Yet this depiction seemed to be a bit over exaggerated. John Franz notes, Uninterrupted action by massed force of large machines would surely have smashed masonry in time, but the conditions in which large numbers of such machines could be gathered and operated were relatively rare, and before the end of the 12th century there is little evidence of artillery smashing the main masses of castles and walled cities. Another aspect in attacking walls was that the quality of stones was very important, because if the stone shatters on the wall the damage is quite limited, thus sometimes stones were transported a long way. At Acre, Richard used very hard stones brought from the west, which were so unusual that they were specially shown to Saladin. One can expect that only a limited number of these special stones were available and used. Furthermore, Hill assumes that light trebuchets were used to throw missiles into the city, whereas heavy trebuchets were used for attacking walls, thus the counter trebuchet with hard stones were probably used against fortifications, whereas traction trebuchets were probably used to attack softer targets like buildings. Note that trebuchets were not only used in the offense, quite on the contrary, they were also used effectively by defenders. Since they were also mounted on towers, they would also outrange attackers' machines. Defenders used trebuchets against siege towers and enemy artillery, thus providing what we would call counter-battery fire nowadays. To summarize, there were two main types of trebuchet that were used during the Middle Ages. The traction trebuchet, which was a rather simple design, but the force of firing was provided by men pulling down ropes, and the more complex counterweight trebuchet, but the force was provided by counterweight. Although it gives a rather simple impression, it was quite a complicated machine. By the way, if the concept of the traction trebuchet is too odd to you, you might check out the following real life video of one. And for those who want to rebuild one in the Sandbox game Besiege, there's also at least one video out there. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And see you next time.